Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Cornelia Stephanie Show. I'm Cornelia Stephanie, your host, and we're here living heaven on earth. Thank you so much for listening and for tuning in. One of the reasons why I created this show is because I want to offer the listeners a a beautiful structure of what it looks like when we're living heaven on earth. And so that we can have beautiful conversations with people that, that, that are embodying that way of living, that are walking their talk, that are game changers on the planet, and that are doing extraordinary things, and also offering the tools uh, on how to navigate these interesting times. And the reason why this is so important is because these people that I bring on to this show, they, they have done it themselves. They're doing it and they're living it. And that's what makes them so authentic. It's what makes me authentic. And it, it, it is what will make you authentic too once you're integrating this type of lifestyle, this way of living. Because part of living heaven on earth, it's not a mental construct. It's, it's a reality. This template exists. And it's an opportunity for everybody to say, yes, I want to live my heaven on earth too. And so what would living heaven on earth be like without perceiving the world through the eyes of an angel. And I want to tell you about uh, one of my other co-hosts, Tom Lombrazo. And Tom comes on the first Friday of every month. And Tom was a city planner uh, for over 40-something years. And he um, was very much in his left brain, linear, very, you know, planner, had to have everything planned out. And his life entirely changed one day when he was driving down the highway. And heard the voice, an angel's voice, tell him to slow down now. And if Tom would not have listened to this show, to this voice, he would have been dead because he ended up getting into an accident and it would have been a fatal accident. The accident that he did have wasn't fatal, but it changed his life forever. Him and his wife wrote a book called Uh, The Magic of Finding Love and Peace. And Tom's on the show the first Friday of every month. And everybody should get this book. This book is $25. You can get it on his website. And it is loaded with high vibrational frequency. And if you were not a believer in angels before, after reading this book and listening to Tom, the amazing vibration that he brings uh, to to the planet you will be a believer. So www.whenangelstouch.com with Tom Lombrazo. He's on the Living Your Heaven on Earth radio show every single first Friday of the month at 12 noon. My other extraordinary uh, co-host is Charlene Hess. And Charlene is an empowerment coach. She's a hairdresser. She's a fitness instructor. She does very. She does a lot of different things. And Charlene is on the third Friday of every month. And one of the things that Charlene is helping us with right now, she's helping us with uh, connecting deeper to our calling, what our purpose is. What would heaven on earth be like if we didn't know what our calling was, if we didn't know what what our purpose is. And so if you didn't get a chance to inter- to watch the interview that I did with her just the last uh, Friday, it was absolutely incredible. People have been calling in and wanting, can't wait to see what the next show is going to be about because she took us into her perception of meditation. She's the, she's the authority in that. And she told us an incredible story and she's offering free coaching for everyone that wants in regards to meditation. You can email Charlene at livingwhole at charlenehess.com. And you can also go to her website at charlenehess.com and take a look at what she's offering there. And now I'm so excited about today's show because this is like such a huge thing for us because uh, the person that I'm going to introduce you to is a dear, dear, dear friend of mine, a soul sister, and she is one that is of high integrity, walking the path. And one of the things about 
uh, my guest today is that she's been through the trenches and she's absolutely an extraordinary person and I can't wait to introduce you to her, but I want to read her bio. So I'm going to pull that up right now. So Susan Glavin, she's an author, she's an inspired speaker, a teacher and a student of the magic and mystery of life. She's the co-creator of Be the Gift, and one day we'll tell you what that means. What is the co-creator of Be the Gift? Because that's one of the things I want to ask her about. She facilitates women's creation circles for the last past eight years, and she's active with that. She has claimed and embraced her high priestess hood and is a lover of magic and wonder and awe of life. She is currently creating a course to support women and men to live their beauty and mastery from the inside out, sharing that work in the hair design industry because she's also a hairdresser as well and has been for over 30-something years. But the one thing that this bio doesn't say, and I am officially now announcing this because one of my gifts is I help people... Uh, receive the acknowledgement of their highest vibration on a platform in a structure. And Susan uh, embodies the Sophia Code. And we'll talk more about what the Sophia Code means. But the Sophia Code is about uh, the presence of high vibrational unconditional love and it's it's about the magdalene energy it's about the mary magdalene energy it's about shakina it's about the holy spirit it's about grace and susan is a bringer of that code she's a liver of it and so i want to be able to acknowledge her here first today on the show publicly as a bringer of the sophia code welcome to the show susan glavin oh Honey, I think I'm just going to receive all those extraordinary, beautiful words from you. So I'm just going to take a second here because I'm like, wow. Thank you. Um, and thank you, love. Um, I just have to say, you are one of my favorite people on the planet. You have been a soul sister for, you know, many, many years. We knew we were supposed to be together for a long time. And this is like a really um, profound moment, actually, for me. And I know for you, for us to be together. Um, and I love, one of the things that I absolutely love about you is that it is your dedication, your devotion, and the most high integrity as you have walked your journey. It's been um, such a beautiful gift for me. And I know all the hundreds and thousands of people that you are touching and will touch in the future. So thank you. And thank you for this wonderful opportunity to really share, you know, um, my journey. And my intent is that that it will somehow, you know, inspire uh, others to you know, to live their highest destiny here on the planet today because the time is now. Yeah. It really is. The time is now. Well, here's the thing, you know, about you, Susan, is you are such a light. There is something that is so uniquely amazing about you and the gift that you bring that just lights people up. So you can't even do anything about it anyway, because it's just part of it. So that's what's going to happen on this segment today. I'm excited to talk about one of my favorite subjects with you, because we're talking about high integrity. You know, when you're talking to me about what you appreciate about me, I'm just mirroring to you who you are and the high integrity being devoted on your path, being, uh, being of service and the, the people that you're touching, you know, because that's, that's part of that Sophia code. That's part of the energy. That's part of the Magdalene. That's part of the Mary, mother Mary. It's part of, um, all of that walking the talk and um, you and I, we're, we're, we're living in our mastery and that's what it is that we're here to share with others today to show them, hey, you know, this is what it's about. Yeah. We share, um, we share a very, we share many things in common, but 
but one of the, the main things is the power of the spoken word. And so your signature line, as I was talking about, that's your signature, that's what I'm branding you with, is uh, your word is your wand. Yes, babe. And I was woken, I think it was about five years ago now, woken up at three o'clock in the morning, which I call the angel hour. And I heard clearly, your words are your wand. And I was like, wow, okay. So I had to really sit with that. And, you know, over the, you know, the last five years, I've really realized just how powerful and potent our words are in creating our realities, especially today. You know, for me, um, before I say anything, I ask myself this question. Is this going to add value to life or take it away? So I'm really um, very conscious of what I speak into the world. Haven't always been. This has been a little process for me. And it's so funny because people just will say things offhand like, oh, this is so hard. I had a friend we're doing an art class and she was, she goes, this is so hard. And I looked at her and I said, Oh, honey, I said, this is just an opportunity for you to stretch. She goes, well, I didn't really mean that. And she, I just love her dearly. But the thing is, it was already spoken out of her mouth. So that's what I'm talking about. It's those little things that we think don't matter that much, right? Yes. Say this yes. or that. And it's like, oh, well it's, well, it's no big deal. It is a big deal. And we really need to be really conscious of that. You know, and it does take practice. You can't. I would tell people, don't beat yourself up over this. This takes time and practice doing this to really be clear about what you're speaking in the, in the world. Because I know from reading the Sophia Code, which I totally love, that back in the Egyptian mystery schools, they would take weeks, months on one syllable, the vibration of one syllable. And the greatest thing about that is they did all that work for us. So now we just to be really clear about what is it that we're speaking. And I'll tell you two of the biggies for me, if people could just consider doing this. First, stop complaining. Second would to be stop gossiping. Those two things will dramatically, dramatically shift your life into a, a higher vibration. So would you say, that would you challenge our audience today to, to uh, completely remove those two things out of their life, to stop gossiping? I challenge you to stop gossiping. <laughs> I challenge you to stop complaining. Yes. Would, you, would you like to set forth that challenge? Love, I would love to support and inspire that in their lives. And I would also like to say, it's going to take you a little time because we're so used to complaining. It's like an automatic for people. Well, people complain to connect, to be a part of, you know, they, they complain to get recognition. It's a habit. It's, it's a, a habit. habit. It is a habit. And many people, I, I would say quite a few people, that is their mode of language. It's really a good one. Their mode of language. Susan, we're going to take a break. Thank you, listeners. We're going to take a break, and we'll be right back with more of Susan Glavin. And I'm with Susan Glavin, and we're talking about the power of the spoken word. So earlier, Susan, before we went to break, you were talking about you were challenging our audience with two things, and that is to stop complaining and to stop um, gossiping. Stop gossiping. Stop gossiping. And I want to share with you something that came to me that was so powerful about that. Um. So I want your audience to think about something that's really important for them in their life, whether it be the ending of suffering on the planet, the end of hunger, um, the end of the, the shootings that are happening in our schools. So those things that are like, they're passionate about, like this needs to end. So I just want you to consider something that every time you gossip, speak ill of another, 
you know, holding them in a low light, that you are actually perpetuating those things happening on the planet, that that actually adds to that suffering on the planet. So for me, that'll stop you quicker than anything is to consider, wow, when I'm speaking about someone, that's affecting this thing that I'm really passionate about ending in the world. So it's a, just a wonderful thing to notice. And the, another thing too, if people, you, you've been used to engaging in people in gossip, you can just say, you know what, I decided to stop doing that. And when you're around people that are gossiping, you can either walk away from that conversation because you're being affected by that greatly. Or you can take the people, this is a really profound, courageous move. You can take the person that's gossiping about another and take them by the hand and take them to the person they're talking about and say, they have something to say to you. I tell you, it would be the last time. Yeah, that's the real courageous move. So, yeah, so I would really challenge you all to take this on, to really take this on and... um, See the shifts that happen in your life. If you're not living the life that you love right now, if things aren't turning out the way you desire, then I guarantee you these two things will make a profound difference in that happening. Yes, it's really being conscious of the words that we speak. And like you said, Susan, you know, um, challenging someone to take it on. And that's what we're talking about. We're talking about mastery. And as masters, we need to be responsible responsible for the energy that we put out, for the yes. frequency that we put out, the projection that we put out. Even when we're talking about our political mess of everything that's going on out there, what is it that you would like to see happen instead of, Um, talking about the drama and what they're not doing. Uh, I can relate to that because when when it comes to my own journey in that um, I'm really picky and private about who I share things with when I'm when I'm going through something. And it's because I don't know about other people. Uh, I don't want them to affect my field because I know how powerful people are. They're, they're powerful whether they, they realize it or not with negative or positive. And Absolutely. so unless I know what your level of integrity is like, I'm not going to share with you uh, my own personal uh, situation because I don't want you worrying about me and I don't need you affecting my field with negative words, thoughts, or uh, whatever. So because only projecting the positive into the field, and that's what I hear you saying, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. We have such a profound effect, Masters. Because you really are. Absolutely. So, own it. Claim it. It's yours. Claim yes. it. Claim it and own it. Yeah. Claim, own it. And so, you know, I just uh, the other day called you up and invited you to be part of this show. That's because I was woken up at one o'clock in the morning um, by my guides and saying, uh, texted you, I think at one o'clock in the morning and want you to share this story about uh, Africa with us because such an incredible story that you have to share. You recently were at the airport. You're on your way to Africa. And that was in January of this year, January of 2018. February. Was it in February? February 9th was the day I was, it was so awesome. I had just made a Facebook post. Off I go with this airplane taking off, right? And I get to the airport. I'm all excited. I got everything ready. I checked in the night before. All I needed to do was put my passport in and get my boarding pass, right? And check in my luggage. So I'm standing there and I put my passport in and it says expired. And I went, oh, no, 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 hang on put it in again, put it in about three more times. And this young gentleman came up to me, says, are you having problems with, I said, yes, it says my passport's expired. And he goes, well, let me take a look at that, dear. And he looks, he goes, honey, your passport's expired. (laughs) I mean, okay. Who plans a trip for eight months to Africa and has an expired passport? Who does that? I was like, I was so embarrassed. Okay, that was the first thing. I was just so embarrassed. Everybody do, all my clients, every, off to Africa, she goes, right? And I'm like, oh my God. And I, my heart was just pounding. I remember he says, well, you can go through the line and see what she can do. And I'm waiting. And I'm just, I'm serious. I was, You know when the, the term beside yourself? I was. I was outside I was like wait no this is not happening to me this is not happening to me and it was so funny when I got up to the 
to the gal at the counter and I'm like, I noticed I was doing a little song and dance kind of thing. Like maybe she wouldn't notice. I was going, well, here's my visa. Let me give you my visa here. And she said, oh, honey, I'll need that in just a minute. And she gets and she goes, sweetie, your passport's expired. And I was just like, it was like, <sighs> and remember pulling my luggage in my backpack over to this little bench. And I sat there for him. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So I called my guy at Odyssey Safari to let him know. And he was like, oh my God, how did this, I, yeah, I know. And so I'm just sitting there and he says, let me get some things handled. I went, okay. And my, I, I called my friend who was taking care of my cat. And I told her, she's gone. Oh my God, God you kid. I, I know. And she goes, do you want me to come and get you? I said, no, I need to kind of decompress a little bit. I think I'm going to Uber at home. And I did. And I got in the Uber car and I was telling the woman what happened. She says, that happened to me. And I said, it did. And she goes, you need to get on the phone right away to the passport agency in Seattle. If you don't have an appointment and a, re and a confirmation number, you're not going to get in. And I was like, so I am on my phone, just dialing away, getting on there. And of course it's all automated. Right. And so I'm sitting there waiting and it says the first available appointment. And I'm like, because if I don't leave Monday, kids, it's like too late. Yeah. It's the yeah. Week. I'm like, this is it. And so they say Monday at 830. I was like, hallelujah, hallelujah. I was so excited. So I mean, Walgreens, passport picture, all the, all the things, get it dialed in. And then I just got to sit in my office in total embarrassment. Like, well, okay. And then I immediately put a Facebook post out. Guess what, guys? This is what happened. And I, the intent is to get to Africa. And this is what I'm going to do. So I have to get this information off to Odyssey Travel because I have to have a confirmed flight because you can't get your passport the same day. So I do that and I'm waiting for him. So I make a train reservation up to Seattle. I get a reservation up to the Double Tree Hotel, yes, to get it all dialed in, and then I'm waiting for him. Saturday, I get an email, here's your new itinerary. Well, my first one was from Portland to Amsterdam to Nairobi, sweet little flight. Well, the second one was from Seattle to Washington, D.C., to Ethiopia, to Ethiopia, to Nairobi, on Ethiopian Airlines, okay? So it was a whole, with an upcharge of $1,140. I was like, oh my God. I was like, am I not supposed to go? Cause I'm a in the flow kind of gal. Things need to flow for me, you know, let's just let it all flow. Things were not flowing, okay? So I had this extra money for when I got back from my trip. Well, that was like all going into the bank. I remember praying on the way to the bank. Okay, angels, I need a sign, I need a sign. Is this in my highest and greatest good, or should I call it a day? So I get to the bank, I put all this cash in there, and I get a one, three, 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 one, three, which is, you know, one of my numbers. So anyway, so my friend drops me off at the train station. I'm sitting out in the sun, and I'm all excited. Okay, this is going to happen. This is good. And all of a sudden, the voice says, did you bring your credit card? And I'm like, oh, my God. And I look at my little travel pack, right, open it up. No credit card. I had left it in my purse over the weekend when I was getting some stuff. And I was like, oh, call her immediately. Oh, my God. I left my, she goes, what the hell is going on with you? And I said, I know. So she goes, okay, I can't do it. My friend's here. Where are you? Where's your credit card? She's in the car. She's on her way down. I have 15 minutes before the train comes. And so I'm with that, sick. Susan, with that 15 minutes before the train comes, we definitely, I'm sitting on the edge of my seat again. Um, so we're going to go to break and we'll, ba okay. we'll be back and you'll tell us what happened after. Okay. We're right. listening to the Cornelia Stephanie show. We're going to go to break. We'll be right back. Hi, everybody. I don't know about you, but I'm on the edge of my seat with this story again. And so Susan was at the train station and she didn't real she realized she didn't have her credit card. And now she was making a call to get her credit card and take us, take us. Yes. So 
there I am, and I am literally pacing. I have 15 minutes before the train gets there. The gal's on her way. I'm like, oh, please, come on, bring it in. So I'm standing there. I see my train coming, and I get a text from the woman who has my ID and credit card, and she says, I'm here, but there's a train going in front of me, and I turn around, and there's a train going behind me, and she's on the other side. And I'm <laughs> like, Really? That's what I'm thinking. Like, are you kidding me? So I talked to the guy. I said, how long will you hold? He goes, oh, no. He says, we don't hold the train. I said, okay. He goes, well, I tell him what's happening. He says, well, you can give your ID and credit card to the guy up front, and we can see if we can get it on the next train up. And I'm like, so I text her. Can you? She goes, are you sure you want me to do that? I'm going, I have no choice. It's time to go. So I get on the train, get up to the double tree, and I'm checking in. They go, well, we need a credit card. And I go, wouldn't that be nice? I said, hopefully it's going to be on the 630 train. And she goes, well, we can't check you in without it. And I said, she goes, do you have a passport? And I said, yes, I do. She didn't know it was expired. And so that got me in another Uber. My Uber bill was really good. Let me tell you. Okay. So down to the train station. I'm just praying, please. Oh, lots of prayer work. I'm telling you, I was like, come on, come on. So I get out of the car and I'm walking and I see this iridescent, literally iridescent rainbow on the sidewalk. And I'm like, oh, good. And then I look up and I see 777, which just happens to be my number. And I'm going, oh, we're, we're good. We're golden. And I walk in and I said, my name is Susan Glavin and I have a package for me from and he hands it to me. And I'm like, doing the dance, doing the dance, right? So I go back, get up the next morning, another Uber ride down to the Seattle pa Passport Agency, get all that done, back home, back down at three o'clock, I have my passport by four, my plane leaves at 11, and I'm like, okay, I have my passport and a chocolate chip cookie, okay? I was like, yay. So I go home and I'm just relaxed, I'm back to the hotel, relaxing and I I always bring my cards with me and I pull this card and it says unstoppable perseverance nonconformity and I'm going you think that's what I think like you think right and I'm like oh my gosh so I get ready off to the airport I'm just so excited again I'm off right everything's good everyone and I get there and I'm telling the gal that's checking me in. I'm saying, oh, you won't buy supposed to be on this flight on Friday, blah, blah. She goes, oh, she goes, you'd be surprised how many times that happens. I'm like, yeah, I, I'm not, uh, no. I said, okay. So she, 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 and then she goes, I need to see your visa. So I hand her my visa and she says, I don't like the way this looks. <laughs> and I'm like, what? What do you mean you don't like the way this looks? She goes, and it's expired. And I'm like, what? What? And she goes, yeah, I don't think this is the correct one for where you're going. And I'm, I'm telling you at that point, I thought, do I drop to the ground now? Or what am I going to do? I mean, seriously, I thought I was just going to drop into a pile of, you know, whatever. And so she goes, I need to Google some stuff. So she's Googling. I'm sitting there going, no freaking way is this happening to me? Right. She calls one of her associates over and she says, what do you think of this? And the gal goes, well, I think it's all right. She goes, no, no, I don't like it. I don't like it. She stands and she goes, well, you know, I just don't want you to get to Africa and have challenges. And I'm like, I want to go, lady, get me on that plane. I'll take care of it when I get there. That's what I was, I was going, okay. I was very, I have to say during this whole time, I never got, you know, nasty with anybody. I never cried once. I just kept going. I wasn't going to be a victim of this. I was going to be, you know, in, empowered by this. I knew there was something here because I always tell people life is always working on your behalf, even when it doesn't look or feel like it. Well, let me tell you, I had to really embody that one. So she says, I need to talk to my supervisor and she leaves and I'm standing there and lady goes, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Oh my God, no. 20 minutes, I'm standing there and I'm thinking, this could be it. You may not be going anywhere and you've invested another, how many thousands of dollars on this trip, right? So she finally comes out and she says to me, wow, I guess it's okay. 
okay, I did want to just go, can I hit you a couple times really hard? I did. I just wanted to get him just a little bit, right? Ah. I just said, okay, you know, got that boarding pass. And I swear, I ran to the gate. I ran to the gate and I sat there in the seat, just making sure I knew where I was. This is good. Of course, I had a couple hours and I thought, I'm going to get something to eat. And I walk around the corner and there's the African cafe. And I'm like, yay. Yes. Yes. Yay. But, you know, the wisdom that I got, it, I didn't get it right at the time. Of course, it took me a little while to really get the full impact of this beautiful gift I was given. And I mean gift. I have some really big goals this year, and I've decided to take this year to really bring them forward, to really ground them in. And they're pretty lofty, and there's a lot of things to do. And guess what? It's not always going to be easy. There's going to be times when I'm going to want to give up or it's too hard or, you know, all those things are going to come into play. Life isn't always flowing. Do I love the flow? Absolutely. Who doesn't? But there's times when it's like you got to show up. You have to show up and stay committed to what it is you're doing. And I'm telling you, I was going to Africa. And that's exactly what happened. Even with all the hurdles, everything I had to go through, it all happened. And, and it all happened. And would you also agree that part of the reason why it happened is because you are um, embodying your mastery and at the same time, you could have very easily been, um, the term that they use is um, spiritual bypassing. Um, oh, I'm going to go with the flow and this isn't meant to be and I'm not supposed to go. But in your heart of hearts, you knew that you really wanted to go and that you were going to do whatever needs to be done in order to make that happen. The fact that that angel in Uber was in the car and said that happened to me and this is what you need to do. That was a, a complete gift right there. And thankfully, you shared it with her about what happened uh, yeah. to you. But I, I'm finding that, you know, um, we can't have somebody do something for us, us that we aren't willing to do for ourselves. And I think that that's what that experience also showed you, that no matter what, that you're committed, you're yes. on it, you're a soldier, you're a warrior, you're going to you're gonna move mountains because you're going to get it done. Because in your heart of hearts, you knew you were going to Africa and you were unstoppable. Yes, I was unstoppable. And I got the gift of every piece of that, every piece, you know, and that I think is the beauty of everything is always happening on our behalf. It truly is. It's whether you're willing to look for it and keep going. And it wasn't that I didn't want to just scream and go, what the hell's going on a few times that it was like, no, I, you know, and it, that's our mastery. That's what we're talking about here. Our mastery, stepping into that and being that victorious person instead of the victim of life. Right. And knowing when to put the pedal to the metal and when to take a pause. That's where we're playing in that. The mastery truly is about that. Yeah. yeah, I know. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. And, you know, part of what we're talking about here is we're talking about the power of the spoken word and how not to gossip, not to infect the field, not to complain. And everything you were going to going through during that time would have given you as a victim, possibly, yes. uh, the perfect opportunity, not as an empowered, awake person that's responsible with their energy, you would have been able to just go, oh, these people are against you, this trip, it's not going to work out, and, and all these things. You would have been able to just say all these negative things and put that out there, um, knowing that this energy is going to come back and that you're creating your environment, you're creating your energy, you're creating what it is that you want by the words that you speak. Yes, and there, I could have blamed a few people, honestly, Safari, you know, the, the visa service, why didn't they catch this? You know, it was like, blah, blah. no, this was mine. I'm an adult, responsible person. This was mine and I owned it. And that's why I think it unfolded the way it did. You know, it was, I was like, why, you know, I wasn't on the phone screaming at people. How did this happen? Uh, you know, it was like, I just took responsibility for it. 
You did. And that's what's so beautiful because it's like, look at what you did, the foundation that you set for yourself. And that's how 20, wow. the end of 2017, beginning of 2018 is that's the ground that you're anchoring in. And now everything, like you said, you have big goals, you have big dreams, you have big visions. And now everything is built upon that ground because of the way that you showed up for yourself. And that's so inspiring, Susan, because that's what you're doing in creating your environment and then helping other people with the story that you're telling and with with what it is that you're doing so I thank you so much for doing this work because it's like it's huge I mean going to Africa and you know with an expired passport one day and then you know uh, you you went anyway and you got it done so congratulations thank you babe yeah awesome. let's take a break and we'll we'll come back and we'll talk some more with Susan Glavin Hi, everyone. Welcome back. You're listening to the Cornelia Stephanie Show, and I'm talking with my very special guest, Susan Glavin, and how we can all be unstoppable, how we can step into our mastery. And Susan is, is inspiring us to stop complaining and to take hold of our mastery, and she's challenged us. And so thank you so much for sharing your incredible story about your expired passport and how you went to Africa anyway. And so... What an incredible story, Susan. Yes. It, you know, and, you know, looking at it, you know, if I, if that wouldn't have transpired, if it wouldn't have happened, I would have known that I gave it all I had. Yeah. Yeah. I truly was unstoppable, but I really think the force of that, mm -hmm. and I really believe that my living in integrity and really following, living what I'm sharing with you tonight, the not gossiping, the not complaining, speaking powerfully about my life, who I am and who's in it, was a really force behind all of that happening also. I could, I could absolutely guarantee you that. Yes, yes. So Susan, you do a lot of things. You're down in Portland or Vancouver, Washington. <laughs> Yes. Right. And so um, you're a hairdresser right now. I mean, that's one of the things that you do, but you do many other things because you've got your women's circles. You're yes. a writer. You're a creator of products right now. You're creating uh, a product that you're going to be introducing uh, into to the hair just a hair industry. It's called Heart of Hair. That's coming. And this is uh, this is a. a a unique creation of yours that ex is exclusive for the hair industry. And yes. so we'll be watching that unfolding for you. But also you have some free gifts for our listeners today. Um, please tell us what they are and where they can get it. Yes, um, it's a beautiful uh, transmission that came to me right after I started the circle, Creation Circles for Women, which are a safe and sacred place where you can be heard, honored, and cherished. They're beautiful and extremely powerful because when the women gather, the magic Mountains happens. Mountains move. Mountains move. It's, it's amazing. They're really for me. But um, it's called the, vi the Five Virtues of an Extraordinary Life, Extraordinary Relationships. And we start our circle with these. This is a beautiful foundation for life. And you can go to my website at www.susanglavin.com and sign up and I can get you those five virtues. And I highly recommend that they be a template for your life. That's how powerful they are. Yes. Yeah, and one of the things about extraordinary, because that's that's who you are. You are an extraordinary woman. You embody extraordinaire. This is what you've, you've always um, demonstrated with living in your integrity is you're so committed and dedicated to living an extraordinary life. And I mean, that's not an easy task, you know, in today's, in today's world, because that means we consciously have to continuously keep having that as a clear and intent as a clear yes. intention to to that's a goal that's a virtue that I want to embody an extraordinary life and I'm gonna do whatever it is to live that and be that and so that's the reason why you created the um, the five virtues of living an extraordinary yes. life because that's what you do right and yes. so if people want to come to your women's circles where do they go and if people want to come and get a fantastic over the top ridiculous uh, amazing super gorgeous just hair appointment with you. 
Well, you can go to my website. That's all being going to be revamped. It's like there's this new creation, new. It, it's all coming. You know, I mean, it's spring is sprung, right? <laughs> Growth. And I'm like, and I'm really, ins- I feel so blessed and inspired to get this beautiful information. Yeah. So you can go to the website. You can actually look at the circles. They're in Vancouver, Washington at the Bija Body Bliss Yoga Studio. And they're always, we always gather at the first of every month. Mm-hmm. Yes. And uh, yeah, you can come to a lower salon and spa and I can, you know, take such lovely care of you and do the best job so that you look as beautiful on the outside as you are on the inside. Yes. To get your and inner and outer. Me. Yeah. And believe me, it's more than just a hairdo. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's completely, you sit, you sit in a chair and it's just amazing what happens when people come into your chair and they get to experience uh, that whole vibrational energy shift and then something happens for them. So it's not just hair. It's, yes. it's what happens on the inside as well, isn't it? Yes, yes. And we're, we, I am so grateful to be able to touch people's lives every day. It's powerful. And that's why the course, The Heart of Hair Beyond the Chair, is, you know, it's about m- being a master around your work environment and being fulfilled in your work environment. It's very exciting. And I, I, and I bet Susan, that's a lot where you see about some of the gossip that goes on and some of the complaining that goes on because you're on the inside yes. and then you're able to really see about what happens there and what kind of environments people are creating. And again, as your gift to us is you're wanting to make conscious uh, the parts where people are unconscious and they're yes. maybe not aware that that's the environment they're creating. And this is what you want to, w- what you want to share with them that, Hey, it doesn't have to be that way that you can create a better environment for yourself. Is that right? Beautifully said, honey, because people aren't aware. And that is why I want to bring this awareness of that. They have a choice. They can shift their life. And, you know, it's not just for this, the, the people in the hair and just anyone could take this course and get tremendous value. But because I love these things and everything's kind of come together, it's, you know, it's truly about the people they touch every day. We touch hundreds and thousands of people that go out and they affect their families, their communities. So if we can use our power, our inspiration, our healing touch, because we really do have it and send those people out, it's going to affect, it's, the ripple effect of that is profound, and I know it. And that's why I'm so passionate about it, about doing this work and sharing it. And thank you so much. I'm going to ask you for final words, so so get those words. But I want to tell the listeners about my upcoming course, and I have to go through it really quick because we only have one minute left, and that is my upcoming wholeness practitioner course. And it is, um, I added so much to it. It's a retreat that begin, that's at the end of June, and I added so much to it. It's the online classes that begin May 6th, May 6th, and then every Saturday after that is an online class and it's all about the basics the power of the spoken word it's about your emotional body it's about working with the shadow it's about changing your limiting beliefs and it's about really getting conscious about all of the things in the physical body that we need in order to become the most emotionally wealthy and healthy person that we can be because that's a vibration and a frequency that we're emitting out so go to corneliastephanie.com and look under the evolve tab And then you can see become a wholeness practitioner and everything is listed there for you. And you can also email me at radio at corneliastephanie.com and I can send you any insight and information. We want to thank you so much for tuning in. And Susan, what's your final last words? Well, I just want to say that's fabulous what you're doing. I'm very excited about that. Thank you for bringing that forth. I would say this. um, It's really time to embody your mastery here. And I want you to know it's not always comfortable. And more importantly than anything, I would say be kind and loving to yourself as you were on this journey. It's detrimental to berate yourself and talk negatively to yourself when you're on this journey, when you're making some headway and then you feel like you're not. Loves, 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 love yourself. 
Give yourself that love you need, okay? Because you're you, you're awesome. You're amazing. You're extraordinary. You're masters. Wise, wise words from a wise woman. Thank you so much, Susan. Love you all. See you next time. Namaste.